Hi everyone, my name is Bijan from Product Management Exercises and today I'm here with my friend Gabe, who's the product manager from San Francisco and has been using our website productmanagementexercises.com to sharpen his PM skills and is volunteer to do a mock interview with us today. So the question that we're going to do today is how would you design a gardening app? Gabe, would you like to say a few words before we start? Um, no, I think <laughs> I think it's fine. Um, I, I'm happy to get get stuck into it. I, I really love um, the um, productmanagementexercises.com uh, website and um, and uh, been really enjoying sort of uh, you know doing some of the exercises. I think it's it's made me a much better uh, product manager. Um, really helped me uh, think um, on the fly a lot more analytically and um, really break things down. Um, and as you'll see, you know, we get into what does the user need? What is the user journey? What are the solutions? How would we measure it? All these kinds of things. And I think it's really made me a better product manager um, in my, you know, in my day to day work. And I, and I really love that. So thank you so much for you know, making Glad such a, a great uh, community. Glad to hear. All right. So let's get into it. How would you design a gardening app? Okay, um, so just to start off with first, um, I just wanted to clarify, am I just a, a startup or am I a big company that's creating this? Is this, is this Google or Facebook that's creating it or is it um, a startup? You can assume that it's a startup that's creating this. Okay, awesome, all right. Um, so I'm a startup and I'm assuming I'm a you know, for-profit startup. Um, I think, and this is the V1 uh, product. Um, from, from scratch, like zero to one product. So I think for that, we really want to optimize for kind of acquisition and um, engagement. Um, so the next step I want to take is to think, um, to think, think through some, um, uh, some of the different user segments uh, for who might use this. So um, when I think about that, I can think of um, sort of personal, and then I can also think of kind of business. Um, so on the personal side, we have um, sort of amateur gardeners and hobbyist gardeners um, who want to um, learn how to garden or improve their gardening abilities. Um, and then um, on the business side, you know, I can think of people that do professional, people that do landscaping um, and, um, you know, maybe businesses that sell plants like nurseries and stuff like and, and places like that. Uh, so, I, you know, I really need to focus on one of them. Um, I'm seeing this as being like a, I'm personally really, I've been getting more into gardening recently. I think that particularly with, with COVID um, and people being sort of stuck at home, there's a lot more interest in particularly house plants, but also, you know, you, gardening in your terrace and in your backyard and things like that. And I suspect that that's just going to continue even after I think people, once you take up a hobby like that, it tends to stick. Um, even after COVID, you know, something like COVID goes away. So I think I'd really like to focus on these kind of amateur gardeners. And then um, I'm, I can see later on, potentially, you know, I've focused on monetization, but later on, maybe we can focus on how to match those with, with you know, professional people uh, like landscapers or, or um, people that are selling plants. But to start off with, I'm just going to focus on the needs of the sort of amateur uh, hobbyist uh, gardeners. Sounds good. Um, so the next step I want to take is, uh, I really like to think about the user journey. Um, so what is the user journey of someone who is a hobbyist, uh, gardener? Um, so the first thing is they need to, um, uh, choose the, the plant, what, figure out what kind of plants they want to plant. Um, they probably need to learn a little bit of basic information about it first, but then it's going to lead them to choosing what kind of plants they want to plant. Um, Purchase. They, then they need to um, purchase uh, the the plants and other material. Um, they plant them. Um, then they need to uh, um, cultivate and grow them. Um, and then, depending on what type of plant it is, um, you know, harvest. Right. If it's if it's a vegetable plant versus just flowers, or you know, like a evergreen, just beautiful plant, like a you know palm tree or something like that you know they don't need to harvest that um and then i'm just thinking also maybe there's something about you know sharing about it and, and connecting with the community or something like that um so i think that um i kind of want to since this is an mvp i want to 
even at this stage, figure out which are the must have sections of the user journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the most important is um, uh, figuring out what plants to plant, um, planting them, and then um, probably uh, cultivating them um, and growing them. Although, actually, you know, I think, I think harvesting them, sharing about them, um, maybe even purchasing them at this early stage is um, not, as, not as essential as a must have. Um, whereas the choosing what plants you want, um, being able to plant them and being able to cultivate them are must haves. Um, whereas the rest of them are like nice to haves at this, at this early stage. So I'm gonna now try to figure out um, pain points for each of those must have sections of the user journey. So um, let me think about um, the, uh, let me think about uh, pain points. So, so we have, um, I'm just writing on a, on a Google doc here. So, um, okay, so we have um, choosing uh, the plants uh, to plant. So let me think about a few different um, pain points there. So I can think of, um, uh, not not knowing um, what kind of, of plants um, are suitable for the climate, um, um, amount of space you need, um, uh, how how much um, effort it's going to take for cultivation. Right, those are some pain points I might have. So next uh, user step in the user journey was. Um, that I said was must have was, let me look back, um, was planting them. Um, so I'm kind of skipping out on the, um, the purchasing them because I think you can go to Home Depot and purchase pretty easily. I don't think that's a must have, um, but planting them, I think also um, understanding um, you know, how to plant them, uh, what kind of, of soil I need. Um, and, I, um, and I'd almost maybe yeah, group that. And then the next step is uh, cultivating them. And this is where I actually think um, there's probably a lot of pain points. So um, how often do I need to water them? I don't know that. Um, oftentimes I, I forget to water them. Um, also, I've noticed that with my pain, uh, sorry, with my uh, house plants, they sometimes they get spotty, they'll get yellow leaves, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm like, am I watering them too much or am I watering them too little? So diagnosing um, like, um, diseases and, and, and issues with them. Um, and um, so yeah, I think, I think I went through the main pain points. So now the next step I want to do is I want to go through some uh, solutions. Um, so um, not knowing what kind of plants are suitable. Um, oh, so actually, okay, I, ne I need to prioritize those. I kind of prioritize a little bit earlier, which is just that I think I, I need to, I must address for MVP um, something I think about each of these. If I had to, I think um, I do need to uh, figure out what plants I want. Um, I want to know how to plant them. Um, oftentimes if I buy a, a pre-potted plant or something like that, I don't need that. But if I'm getting something from seeds, we're calling this gardening. And I, I see, I probably should have clarified this earlier, but I think of gardening as incorporating house plants as well as, you know, like uh, planting cucumbers and tomato trees and, and things like that. Um, so that, that was my thought here. So I was, I was thinking that, um, that gardening would include uh, how both house plants and um, like outdoor kind of plants with indoor and outdoor. So mm -hmm. um, I do think that planting is a, is a must have, um, which I mentioned before. And I also think that um, cultivating, you know, um, is also a must have. Uh, so I'm now actually gonna get to um, uh, prioritizing uh, the, um, so coming up with some solutions. Okay, so not know what kind of plants are suitable. Um, one solution that I can think of is um, some kind of uh, like uh, profile that's uh, kind of wizard or, or um, like onboarding onboarding process 
funnel, uh, funnel or something like that where you get asked a series of questions uh, about um, your goals, um, uh, your time commitment, your uh, price range, you know, your climate, all these kinds of things. And then it could have a suggestion of plants that would be good for you, give, give you like a, a, a proposed plan. Um, how to plant them and how to cultivate them, I actually think kind of go those two pain points, like understanding how to plant them, what kind of soil they need, how often they need to water them. I almost think they kind of go together. So, so some solutions there are um, uh, give uh, content on um, most common plants. Um, at, at the very least, you need to give content on the recommended plants, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe there's, you know, 50 to a hundred different, a hundred different types of plants that I'm recommending people plant. And for each of those, I need to give content on, on how to plant them, uh, how often they need to be watered, um, and, and, uh, common issues. Um, the next thing, so, ha so that's a the solution there. Um, how, for getting to water them, um, I think we could have a tool for logging, uh, when you water them and then getting uh, reminders, push notifications most likely uh, for when you need to uh, water them again. Mm -hmm. And then diagnosing diseases and issues with them. Um, I think there, obviously you could have content about it, but I actually am really interested in thinking, okay, well, how might I use like um, ML or AI to diagnose these diseases? Um, I think it could be difficult. This is going to be, that's going to be harder, but I'm just going to go, you know, AI, uh, ML for, for, uh, you know, you could take, take a photo, for example, take a photo, um, of your, um, plant and then, uh, get told what the disease is like, what the likely issue is mm. and disease and what you should do. Um, oh, and also similarly for, it actually got me thinking, I'm going to flip back to planting them. I, it would be kind of cool to, um, like knowing what plants you want to plant, it'd be cool to maybe be able to, um, use AR to superimpose, um, what, what your plants will look like onto your environment. So if I have a bookshelf, I want to see what a snake plant looks like on top of it. I can see that. Or if I have a big patio, I want to see what cucumber, like cucumber and kale will look like growing there. I can see that. So that'd be kind of cool. Okay. Um, so I think um, now my next step is to prioritize uh, some of those um, solutions, right? Yep. Uh, okay, so I'm going to try to just create, I'm using a Google Doc to write up my notes here, and I'm just going to create a table um, for each of those solutions. And what I want to do is I want to write the solution down. Um, I'm going to write um, uh, impact on the user, like how valuable it is to the user, and um, uh, effort, uh, effort to build. And then I'm going to say, is this a must-have based on that? Um, or a, you know, nice to have, right? Yeah. Um, and that's effectively going to tell me whether it's going to be in the MVP or it's going to be in, you know, in V2, right? Um, yeah. Just thinking, you know, our, our goals here are acquisition engagement. So I wonder whether I should also be thinking about whether this is going to be really important for acquisition um, or engagement. So maybe I have a, a third one there the prioritization point there, I'll, I'll do that. So um, alignment with acquisition or engagement. Um, okay. Okay, so the first solution I said was uh, having some kind of um, profile onboarding process to figure out um, what um, plants you wanna have. So, um, Profile and suggested uh, plants. Impact to the user, I think, is pretty high. That's a pretty major pain point. And the effort to build, I actually think, creating just a wizard like this, I think it wouldn't be 
too hard to build. I mean, at least the, the initial funnel is pretty low. And on the back end, you're going to need some kind of database with, you know, a few hundred plants that are going to be categorized by um, scored according to different metrics. For example, I'm thinking, you know, climate, um, time effort to like cultivation effort, um, uh, um, you know, indoor, outdoor amount of space that you need. So I'm, I'm thinking like, um, I'm thinking on the back end, we would have a few different things like uh, um, uh, climate, uh, how difficult it is to cultivate it. You know, are you a, a, a novice uh, uh, or an advanced um, gardener and how much time do you want to invest in it? How, how costly is it? Um, how long does it take to, you know, grow to get fruit, something like that? Um, you know, have a few different things and we can score each of them. Uh, so I don't think it would be too hard if we if we did it so like on a hundred different plants to start off with um so i'm going to say like you know low uh, mod, medium effort maybe um in alignment with acquisition or engagement i think it's pretty high actually i think it'd be super interesting i think i would download it to to get that suggestion so i'm gonna okay so i'll go back to the must have nice to have later on um below okay so now the next one i had in planting them um solution I had was with content on the most uh, common plants. Um, I think impact on the user is very high. You, you have to have that An effort to build. It really depends if we're using our own content or we can license content or use existing content. If I can figure out ways to use like the free commons content, this is a free app to begin with as well. Um, then I think the effort would be relatively low because I think a lot of this stuff is already out there, but I just don't know whether it's going to be, like how costly it is going to be if we need to if we need to license it. Um, so, but you know, actual building of content, like just a you know HTML or whatever the the uh, I guess it wouldn't be HTML, but just writing the content on a static screen is not difficult. But um, build it, getting the content would be hard, and we'd have to figure out like what is the eighty twenty of plants, for example like 80%, I'm sure it is 80% of the plants people want is only 20% of the plants that are out there, even even more, even less than that, right? I'd say if I go to, uh, you know, Home Depot or something like that, um, or Lowe's, and I look at the plants there, there's, it's real, you know, it's a few, few hundred, but not many thousands of different varieties there. So you can good, just do that. And that's, so I think I'm going to say low, but, you know, I could be persuaded that it's more like a medium effort. Acquisition, I don't think it's super... I don't think it's, yeah, I'd say medium on acquisition engagement. I mean, I think it's important, but it's not going to like really attract people because they can get that kind of information elsewhere. Um, the next thing I have is on cultivating them. So um, I, I sort of said that. Oh, so the next thing I had was um, oh, AR uh, to superimpose uh, plants will look like. I think the impact on the user is medium. It's not like super important. The effort to build is kind of high. But I also think the acquisition engagement impact could be really high. Like it's a really interesting and fun kind of thing to do. Um, so I don't know, let's go back to that. And then similarly, uh, diagnosing um, issues with plants using um, ML and like um, computer vision kind of stuff, right? Like basically, effectively it's like Google reverse image search, right? <laughs> so it's not super complicated, but I think, um, I think the impact on the user is actually high there. And the effort to build, I actually think that, I know there's a like Google Lens, for example, right? Uh, has it, I don't know if you use Google Lens, but basically that enables you to take a photo and you just click a button and it'll tell you what the photo is. And I'm pretty sure that has an API now. So I think that, you know, you're not, if you had to create this like computer vision categorization from scratch, that would be super difficult to build. But if you can use like Google Lens, a like, their cloud, you know, ML API or whatever to tap into their existing categorizations. And I think it would be um, just like medium effort. Um, so I don't know. I don't know exactly the details of that API, but um, I think it'd be really cool if we could get it to work. So um, I'll, put, I'll put medium effort. I'm going to assume that you can use their API. You're not building from scratch. I don't know. Okay. Um, but I'm going to assume that. 
And the alignment of acquisition engagement, I actually think would be really high. I think I could imagine that you do a whole like marketing campaign around this um, and be really good for acquisition. I could Im imagine it's a very engaging feature um, feature there. And um, yeah. And then I think, so, so those are the things that I have uh, now. So the must have, um, I have one, two, three, four, it's have four solutions there. Let me think about a few more. I think I did have some more solutions. I guess some, some other solutions there, which I, I kind of said was not a must have uh, plan, but it would be a nice to have would be, you know, like um, showing people uh, where to buy uh, the um, products um, in their local area or online and, and giving them like inexpensive links. Um, but again, I already sort of, I kind of struck that one out already from the beginning because I thought that it wasn't super relevant, but that's like a fifth solution that we could potentially do later on for monetization. Um, so now I'm going to go to the must have versus nice to have. So I said profile and suggested plans, impact and user high, effort to build medium, um, alignment and acquisition high. So I'm going to say it's a must have. Uh, content on the most common plants. I just think that I said impact to user high, um, effort to build low, though it could be, it could be more like medium and align with the acquisition engagement medium. But I still think it's a must have. Like, I just, I don't think you can have an app like this without content like that. Um, so I think I'm still having myself. AI to superimpose what the plants will look like. I think that's a nice to have. I don't think like, I don't really need, um, you know, a 3D model of a snake plant, you know, to, or like other cucumber plants to figure out what it's going to look like. It's just, I don't think it's a, it's a must have. It's kind of a cool gimmick, but it's not a must have. Um, if I was a interior decorating kind of app, then more so, but not for this. Um, diagnosing issues with plants. I'm really, I think that's super interesting. And if we can do it with the API, I'm going to, I'm going to say that I'm going to include it. Um, but I'd, it's still a nice to have, but depending on effort, I would, I'd say it's like a, I'm going to say it's a should have, you know, somewhere between nice to have and must haves. Okay. And then um, showing people where to build their products online. I already said that's a, a nice to have. So I've prioritized the solutions now. Um, I guess. Um, so what I basically, I have a product that allows people to, um, uh, um, get a personalized plan for what they should plant, learn about um, how to plant them and take care of them. Um, just to summarize here. And um, it has content on the most common plants. And then finally, um, oh, you know what? I also missed, sorry, I missed out on a potential solution there, actually, which was... Um, uh, reminders, reminders for when to water and, and logging. Um, I think that that's the impact on the user, I guess, is um, medium. I mean, I can, I, I'm just thinking about myself. I can remember to do that stuff without, but still useful. Um, an effort to build um, is pretty low. I think just having a simple logging feature is pretty, not very complex these days in, in mobile um, app development. And the application, I don't think on engagement is like maybe medium. So I'm going to put that as a, as a nice to have as well. Um, and then, and then the final product is, so I said, get a personalized plan for how they should, uh, for what they should plant, um, learn about how to plant them, take care of them and, um, probably, uh, have a way to use, uh, um, uh, ML AI to diagnose uh, plant diseases and issues. So now I want to get to um, how to evaluate um, success. So actually, I, I talked about engagement and uh, acquisition, um, and I think I like to think of these in two ways. One is like very broadly acquisition and engagement, um, <laughs> very broadly about acquisition and engagement, um, but then also how are the features specifically that I've created being used? So it's sort of a lot more sort of macro and then more micro. So at a more macro level, you know, how many, how many uh, apps um, are being, so how many downloads um, and growth over time and probably um, 
weekly. I don't think, see this as something that people are going to use every day, but potentially weekly and monthly active usage. Um, and, um, and also, um, you know, maybe second month retention. So after they use it the first month, so they come back and use it again in that second month after they first signed up. Um, and when I say how many downloads, I'm probably more interested, not just in downloads, but like actual uh, signups. So now let me dive a little bit deeper into the specific features. So I have a pretty interesting and, and um, sort of well-developed, I well, I have an idea of quite a well-developed um, onboarding. So I wanna look at um, how many people uh, complete the onboarding. And that's almost my, my you know, activation metric. Um, and, and then within that, I might wanna see, you know, what, what are the are the most um, chosen you know options? For example, so it's going to be really interesting to me. Is there more people looking for house plants? Is there more people looking for outdoors? People looking for for vegetable gardening, and that's really going to help me improve it over time for for one point you know v one point two or v two or whatever. Um, and then I also want to figure out um, how many people are looking. How, how many uh, users are looking at the, the content and growth over time and what specific uh, plants they're um, researching and viewing. And that's again gonna help me figure out what people are most interested in. And then the ML AI um, feature, uh, how many times is this, um, is this used per user uh, per month? Um, how accurate is it? I also wanna figure out um, I probably want to build in some kind of feedback, like is how helpful was this and how accurate is it? So I've got quite a few different things. I'm now going to try to um, pick out one primary one and one um, and then a few secondary ones. So I think my primary one, given that I want you know acquisition, my primary acquisition metric um, is going to be, I think, sort of an activation metric. So how many people are completing their onboarding? How many people have completed the onboarding um, and growth over time. Um, and then some secondary metrics, because that just gives me an idea of people actually using this app, at least getting past the first step. Um, and then some secondary metrics that I want to be looking at are um, just broadly weekly and monthly active usage. Um, and then, you know, uh, how many people are look, looking at content, like looking at content and specifically, um, I guess, how many unique pieces of content have been viewed per, you know, per user per month. And, um, and, and these sort of more feature things like how many, how often, is the ML AI uh, used uh, per month per user and, and how accurate. So to summarize, uh, to summarize, I built a, an app for gardening. Um, I went through the user journey, came up with some different you know, pain points and solutions, and I came down to a product that gives people a personalized plan for what they should plant. They learn about uh, how to plant them, take care of them for the most common um, types of plants, sort of the 80-20 of plants. And then I'd also really like to, depending on you know, further investigation on the effort to, for this ML AI feature, is have a way to take a photo of a plant um, and diagnose issues with it. And my primary metric would be um, the activation metric, which is completing the onboarding. And then I had a bunch of secondary metrics, more specific to features. Got it. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Is there anything you want to add or should I start giving you some feedback? Uh, no, feedback would be good, yeah. All right, sounds good. Well, I think uh, I really like the structure of your answer. It was well-structured. Um, you started off by asking um, some, you started off by breaking down the user groups into the amateur versus the business groups and then saying why you think that focusing on the amateur makes sense. Um, I think the reasoning was very well justified. Um, then you went over the, um, different basically phases of the user journey 
and then you described why you plan to prioritize certain phases and then you really broke down those phases into like particular pain points that are relevant to that user group for that particular phase. Um, and then you came up with solutions for them. Um, the solutions were very, um, some of them were out of box, which is great. I really like them. And some of them were conventional. And this is a really good mixture of kind of like thinking about new ideas and also thinking about, hey, if you know somebody forgets to water, well, I mean, there's an easy, easy way to solve that and that is notifications. And it's really good to kind of like mix the two. Um, I think your evaluation was really good. Um, you picked some meaningful criteria to evaluate and decide whether or not um, these, these um, solutions were practical for you to build. Um, and then you came up with some metrics, um, one of them particularly related to primary, and you had some secondary metrics as well. Um, I think a couple of feedbacks that I would have is one, um, I, I think after you mentioned um, your acquisition and engagement as like kind of your key criteria, um, I would have liked to hear more about why. Um, I think you um, briefly mentioned that you want to go with acquisition and engagement. I'm just giving some a little bit more context behind why you think these two are relevant, I think would have helped. Um, the second part is after you listed the first five, five solutions, you evaluated them, and then you kind of went back and like brainstormed more solutions. Um, I would have just done all the brainstormings at once and then move on to evaluation. And I know sometimes there's like new ideas come to mind once you start like evaluating them. Um, but to be honest, the five solutions that you came up with were good enough that maybe would have been sufficient for you to just like proceed even if new ideas came in. Um, after evaluation, when you did the um, basically coming up with list of metrics to measure the success of your product, um, I think your primary metric was around a number of people who basically completed onboarding. Um, and I think it's good to figure out how you can tie that into um, the pain point the user came for to, to solve. So for example, if it's um, finding a plant, it could be number of people who completed onboarding and did at least like you know one search. Um, or number of people that, that onboarded and you know took one picture as an indication that, hey, they did try to actually find, diagnose what the issue with their plant is. So something that kind of ties it into more um, the actual usage of the product, I think would have been really helpful. Um, just because it could be that a lot of people sign up, um, they hit some sort of a friction point and they never actually get to use the product. Um, so I think that would be my feedback. Um, overall, thank you so much. This is hopefully the community liked it and the community finds it valuable. Um, again, I'm Bijan from Product Management Exercises. Um, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, or if you're preparing for a PM interview, visit our website at productmanagementexercises.com. Um, you'll see a lot of product manager interview questions and answers from the community. Um, you'll see a way to schedule mock interviews with other members of the website, um, and you'll see a bunch of interview guides for those that are preparing for their PM job interviews. Um, thank you again, and have a great day. Thanks.